Yo, what's up guys? Before we dive into the video, I have a huge Corsair bundle giveaway to announce for you guys as a way to say thanks for all the support and for making all this possible. My sponsor Corsair and I have teamed up to hook you guys up big time with a sweet Scimitar Pro gaming mouse, a slick K70 10 keyless keyboard, and a super lightweight, ultra comfortable HS80 wireless gaming headset. All these things are peripherals that I use and love myself and would love to hook you guys up with as well. All you gotta do is use the link in the description to navigate to the giveaway site. There's a ton of different ways to enter, mostly surrounding, you know, following me on social media, following my sponsor Corsair on social media. Doing those things helps you stay in the loop, helps you support us, and gives you a chance to win an insane gaming bundle. So make sure you hook that up Make sure you enjoy the video. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and good luck. Hey, what's up guys? Bajiri here. Now, as we begin Shadowlands PvP Season number 4, I thought now would be a great time to bring you guys a Fury Warrior PvP guide. In Season 3, Fury was actually a very competitive PvP spec, arguably even better than ARMS due to some of the nerfs that ARMS suffered. But Fury really pumps out the consistent damage has a mortal strike that can stack up to 40%, has some nice self-healing at the cost of not having quite as much defensive utility for the rest of your team as arms. Another one of the things that makes Fury shine is the fact that its four-piece set bonus works extremely well in PvP, giving you free procs of recklessness from Raging Blow, which increases obviously the damage that you deal, two, gives you some extra mobility with certain talent choices, and three, generates that much more rage for you so you can use rampage more to keep those stacks of slaughterhouse mortal strike on your targets so what we have in fury is essentially the class fantasy that you look for a raging berserker single target tunneling somebody down applying tons of damage tons of healing reduction until that target's dead <laughs> it's a pretty simple class so it's good for beginners but it is also very effective even at a high rating. So let's dive into the build a little bit and see if we can't get you guys started or just give you guys a little bit more information about Fury Warriors and PvP. Now, because I'd like this guide to be somewhat comprehensive, I am just gonna go ahead and start off right with your abilities. So, and kind of give you guys an idea of what you should have. So Battle Shout, you need this. It buffs your attack power. I usually have this macroed into my mount. So whenever I press mount, it automatically Battle Shouts. Berserker Rage is an extremely helpful tool for getting out of fear, sap, and incapacitate effects. Definitely something that you want to have on your bar. I have this down here on three. Challenging Shout, definitely kind of nice to taunt pets to you, but it is a bit of a situational kind of thing. Not something that you need to have on a super accessible keybind. It's a very uh, situational kind of thing. Charge, your main mobility. It uh, generates some rage for you. It roots people for one second, or you can play a PvP talent to make a root for longer. Definitely want to have this on a nice, easily accessible button. Execute, this is your finishing move. Uh, it generates rage for you, generally. And it uh, does nice damage when things are low health. It does have a bit of a cooldown on it, which ARMS does not have, so Execute's not spammable for Fury. But it's also something that you want to press, especially when you get those sudden death procs, um, which we'll talk about from the talents. Hamstring, this is your primary uh, melee range slow. It applies a 50% slow for only 8 seconds in PvP. Uh, but definitely something that you want to have on your bar. Usually I will macro hamstring and charge together. Next we have Heroic Leap. This is a 45 second cooldown if you uh, don't talent for it, uh, which you don't usually, just heads up. But it is a very, very useful uh, mobility tool being able to leap really far away to targets or away from targets if you need to create some distance. Heroic Throw, usually something that you're just gonna be using to do a teeny little bit of damage from range. Maybe useful to uh, kill totems, keeping rogues from re-stealthing or feral druids from re-stealthing, that kind of thing. Should be on your bar, not something that you're gonna use rotationally or anything, more of a situational kind of thing. Ignore Pain, I find that as Fury, I do not use Ignore Pain quite as much as I do on arms, just because of the 60 rage is kind of a big deal. And giving up 60 rage to Ignore Pain versus Rampage, uh, you lose a lot of offensive power for a little bit of defensive gain. But it is something that you should have on your bar. Uh, it allows you to ignore 55% of damage taken uh, up to 14k total damage prevented. So, I mean, if you're really in a situation where you need to survive, uh, Rage uh, used on Ignore Pain still can be valuable. Intervene is also a mobility skill. It's kind of like a charge that you use. 
except that you charge towards your teammates, and what you do is you intercept all melee and range attacks against them for only 3 seconds in PvP, as long as they remain within 10 yards of you. This is awesome for absorbing damage for your teammates. Um, if an enemy team is popping a lot of offensive cooldowns, you might want to intervene your teammate to just sort of soak a little bit of that damage. Um, a lot of times you'll see like arms warriors intervene and parry on huge uh, offensive cooldown pushes just to sort of soak a lot of the damage while not taking any damage themselves. You could, as a fury warrior, intervene and enrage regen to reduce some of the damage that you're taking and heal some of it back. Uh, that's to protect your allies, basically. Uh, another thing that you can do is intervene CC, so you can intervene blinds, bash, uh, storm bolts, scatter shots, you name it. Anything that's a physical CC, besides like fear, intimidating shout is a physical CC, but it's an AoE, not a targeted thing, so not the same. Um, but intervene's a really, really cool skill with a lot of neat ways to use it. Intimidating shout is an AoE fear effect that actually horrifies your main target, which is a little bit different. Uh, horrify means that they stand still, it does break on damage but everything else runs away. So you can use that strategically to, to fear people out of a Spirit Link Totem, fear people out of uh, Demon Hunter's Darkness ability, basically. Um, but yeah, this is this is your big AoE fear. You can use that to you know set up offensive pushes for your team, or a lot of times you may even save this as uh, a skill that can blow up offensive pushes by the enemy team, so you can use it defensively. It's really, really cool. Pummel, this is your basic interrupt ability. You're gonna be using this to lock casters out from being able to cast the spells from that school. Uh, so kicking, you know, any sort of big scary offensive attacks like Chaos Bolts or kicking things like Fears and Polymorphs to prevent CC on your team, very, very good. We have Rallying Cry, which is a three minute cooldown ability, which grants your teammates a baseline of 15% uh, extra temporary health. This can buy you some time to get out of sketchy situations. You know, if your teammate is getting low, and your healer is in CC, um, Rally and Cry can be one of those things that gives them just enough health for your healer to come out of that CC chain and get some heals on your teammates to survive that scary situation. Um, it is a three minute cooldown, so use it wisely. Shattering Throw, this is a, a fun one. It lets you uh, shatter off immunity effects like Ice Block and uh, you know Divine Shield from Paladins, but you can also use it to uh, shatter Absorb effects. So. It used to deal more damage to those absorb effects, <laughs> but you could like shatter a uh, monk's life cocoon. You could shatter a warlock's big old shield that they put up as well. But yeah, this is a three minute cooldown as well. So same thing, use it wisely. Now these are a couple abilities that I don't use ever. So as fury, you don't really use shield block, shield slam or slam. If there is a good reason to use it, please by all means let me know. But these are pretty much just leftover from when you were leveling and you don't really use them as fury. Uh, Spell Reflection, you definitely use that. This is a, a huge tool to avoid damage and CC once again. It only la it only reflects one spell though, so it used to give you like a period of time where all spells are reflected, which I think it should be like that again, it, even if it's only one second. It's just really annoying to go to reflect like a, a coil or some sort of instant CC like a Hodge and reflect like some pet's little fell firebolt dinky attack instead of the Hodge that hits you two milliseconds later. Really annoying, but we won't fuss about that too much. Summon Steward and uh, Spear of Bastion, those are uh, Covenant abilities. We'll talk about those later. Taunt, this can be useful. You'll see me uh, macroing Taunt in with some of my main attacks. It's a constantly spam Taunt on pets, uh, just to disrupt any sort of pet class. It also helps uh, break you out of CC sometimes. One thing that you want to be careful with is if your healer is really heads up, you're playing with like a Paladin or a Monk uh, who can Taunt CC on themselves. Uh, like taunt the pet to attack them to break them out of CC, you might want to disable that macro just so that your uh, your teammate can outplay and you're not sort of messing with the taunt DR or taunting a pet away from your healer's attempt to taunt it to them, right? Something to consider. The Victory Rush, love this skill. When you kill something, you get to press this and it heals you nicely. You can play a talent that makes it heal you for a ton and you don't even have to um, have killed something to be able to use it, which is really fun. Whirlwind, a nice little spammable AoE. Uh, one of the cool things that it does with Fury is it makes your uh, next two single target melee attacks strike up to four additional targets for 45% damage. So, I mean, if you're in a situation where you can cleave a Rampage on a team, you can put your big healing debuff on the entire team. Same thing with, with Hamstring. You can Whirlwind and then Hamstring, and it will slow as many melee targets 
you know, up to four, so that you could slow like a DK, his pets, and his partner. Uh, pretty cool to be able to do that. That takes you through our basic warrior abilities. Now we can dig into the fury ones as well. Hang in there. We're getting there. Blade Storm. So you actually have the talent for this, but it's an excellent ability. Uh, for Fury, it's on a one minute cooldown. It does a fairly significant amount of damage, but one of the coolest things is that you are immune to movement impairing and loss of control effects during Blade Storm. So you can use this to Blade Storm kidney shots, you can use it to Blade Storm Cyclones, Polymorphs, as long as you know you either use it the exact millisecond that it hits you, which is like a really skillful way to do it, because uh, it'll put you on DR for that ability, but also you won't be in the Cyclone, even though you'll be on DR for Cyclone, which is kind of cool. But it does scale with haste, though, so keep that in mind. The more haste you have, the faster your Blade Storm will finish. So, you know, for arms, Blade Storm lasts longer anyway. But as arms, you also generally have less haste, so the Blade Storm like lasts longer, so it gives you a longer period of immunity. With Fury, you don't always have that because you have a lot of haste, and it's just shorter in general, shorter cooldown, shorter duration. So just make sure that when you're using Blade Storm, you're prepared for it to end a little bit uh, earlier. So one of the bread and butter abilities of Fury is Bloodthirst. This ability actually ends up being a fairly low priority skill to press in PvP. It's probably, you know, your fourth most important ability. Um, just because of the fact that you're actually going to want to be spamming a Raging Blow as much as you can. But Bloodthirst comes in handy, especially when you're either fishing for Enrage or you are wanting to heal yourself with Enraged Regen. Um, it also generates Rage. Disarm is a PvP talent that I don't always take, but we can talk about that when we're going through talents. Enraged Regeneration is your main defensive skill as Fury to save yourself. Uh, it reduces damage taken by 30% and it makes Bloodthirst restore an additional 20% health. Uh, you can use it while stunned, which is very, very neat. You can't parry while stunned, but you can use Enraged Regen. It doesn't, you know, prevent all damage, but only prevents 30% damage, damage, but you can uh, use Bloodthirst to heal yourself for a ton. And when you're using certain talents, the cooldown of Bloodthirst is reduced by quite a bit, so it can be a ton of healing in a sketchy situation. Piercing Howl is going to be another one of your main CC tools. Now, it's an only a slow, but it's a 70% slow for 8 seconds, so it's pretty big. I even use a conduit to reduce the cooldown of this thing, just because it's just that useful. Uh, pretty freaking awesome. Raging Blow is going to be pretty much the main attack you're looking to spam. It generates Rage, it has a chance to proc Recklessness from your 4 set bonus, uh, also has a chance to reset itself, and uh, does some pretty good damage. Now Rampage is going to be your main Rage Spender, so Fury is pretty much a lot of skills that all build Rage for you, and then it really has one primary Rage Spender, which is Rampage. It costs 80 Rage, but it does a fairly significant amount of damage, and it always enrages you. And if you're playing the PvP talent we'll talk about soon, it also applies a stacking Mortal Strike debuff that starts at 20%, and then if you're able to get another Rampage off before the buff falls off, the debuff falls off, it'll be 40% healing reduced. Pretty insane. Recklessness is your primary offensive cooldown, pretty much the bread and butter of Fury Warriors, and something that you're gonna be seeing a lot of if you have your four set bonus. Um, you go Berserk, increasing all Rage generation by 100%. Uh, this is something that only comes from the talent, uh, greatly empowering Bloodthirst and Raging Blow, and granting your abilities 20% increased critical strike chance for a certain amount of time. It does not always empower Bloodthirst and Raging Blow, it's a talent, but it will always increase your Rage generation and give you 20% increased critical strike chance. Uh, very nice cooldown. It's a lot of fun in PvP and PvE. <laughs> you can play like Anger Management and have Recklessness up like what feels like all the time. It does not always generate rage, but uh, it does generate rage by giving you a ton of extra rage generation, if that makes sense. <laughs> Stormbolt is a talent, but it is something that's going to be uh, in your CC arsenal. Basically, it's a 30 second cooldown range stun. Some people for four seconds. Very nice to be able to pop this into some big damage. And rage is another integral part of the Fury Warrior mechanics. It makes it so that when you become enraged off of Bloodthirst, that has a chance to enrage you and Rampage, which always enrages you. It increases your damage done by a certain percentage based on mastery. Uh, haste is increased by 50%, and movement speed is increased by 10% for four seconds. Once again, your mastery as Fury just increases the amount of damage that you deal while enraged. And you can play either two-handers or one-handers. It has to be 
two two-handers or two one-handers, though. If you decide to play with one-handers, your damage will be increased by 12%, and your movement speed is increased by 5%, which is pretty fun. I think overall, just due to the stats on the weapons, uh, Titan's Grip is still superior. You don't really get any, uh, like, extra damage from using two-handers in terms of the spec, but two-handed weapons just deal more damage and provide more strength and stamina and secondary stats, so pretty important, and I think that makes Titan's Grip an overall better choice, but if you like running fast and you like the look of transmogs, with one-hand weapons, go for it, it's fine. But if you're trying to Omega mid-max, Titan's Grip's probably better. Now in terms of talents and PvP talents for Fury Warrior, you do have a few choices, but you also have a few things that are usually gonna stay the same. We can walk you through. First things first, we have your first talent row, which is War Machine, Sudden Death, and Fresh Meat. Generally, Sudden Death is the way to go for PvP. Having an Execute proc does big damage, generates rage for you, and is overall more reliable than either of the two other options. This next row, Double Time, Impending Victory, and Stormbolt, is actually one of the rows that you can change depending on what you want to do with your build. Double Time plus Warbringer is a fair amount of root control and still pretty big damage from the Warbringer proc. Impending Victory can be useful sometimes, especially when fighting comps like DK Demon Hunter, where a stun is nice, but a lot of what you have to do there is just survive intense amounts of damage. An impending victory, a 25 uh, second cooldown, 40% of your maximum life heal is a pretty big deal. Usually, I would say though, you're going to be using Stormbolt. The utility that you get from a stun is oftentimes a little bit too good to pass up, either to set up kills for your team, you know, peel certain goes from like an RMP, things like that. Just has a lot of different uses that a four second rage stun really fits. This third tier is fairly well locked in. Uh, for Frenzy. I feel like in BGs, you could play Massacre if you're just trying to go around and collect killing blows. I mean, who does that really though, right? Who would ever just run around to battlegrounds and try to get, you know, as many killing blows as possible? Nobody does that, right? So, um, no, I, I occasionally will do a little bit of Massacre action, but generally for PvP, you want to play Frenzy. It like kind of allows you to just really train one target down, stack up a ton of extra haste, stack up a ton of damage and uh, healing debuff on them. It's a little bit too good to pass up, I think, for like Arena and things like that. Onslaught, I think I've probably tried this talent one time in like beta or something. Haven't really looked into it since then. Can't imagine it's the way to go for PvP. It does generate a little bit of rage, but uh, I think you're probably mostly sticking with Frenzy for any kind of competitive PvP. Maybe playing Massacre if you're just trying to chop some stuff down in BGs. This next talent row does actually have some kind of cool stuff. But it's another one of the situations where you're pretty much leaving it locked in with war paint. Uh, taking 10% less damage while enraged is a pretty big deal. Uh, just makes it that much tankier. Sometimes in BGs, I'll run around with Bounding Stride for fun. If you love the self-healing element of Fury, you can pop an enraged regeneration, charge somebody in Bloodthirst, and just like top your health off. It's a it's pretty cool. If you're really looking for a sort of healing-focused build, you can do a Furious Charge thing, mobility. Bounding Stride kind of fits that, but I think in general, War Paint is just really solid. Cruelty, while enraged, Raging Blow deals 20% more damage and has a 30% chance to instantly reset its own cooldown. Because of the 4P set bonus, you pretty much would never want to play anything except this. Um, <laughs> you really want to be resetting the cooldown of Raging Blow, giving yourself more chances to proc luck recklessness. The fact that it makes it deal more damage is awesome. Things like Frothing Berserker, they're cool, you know, where Rampage has a chance to refund some rage there's just no way that it's better than cruelty same thing with seethe these are basically like rage management skills and none of them hold a candle to cruelty um in general but especially with the set bonus now for pvp once again we talked about bladestorm a little bit earlier i would pretty much always recommend playing bladestorm i think that uh the cc immunity that it gives you is tremendous and paired with the uh Tormented King's Legendary, which we'll talk about in a second. It's really, really powerful. It can proc. Whenever you press Bladestorm, it can give you either Avatar or Recklessness, which is really, really nice. I don't think that Dragon Roar is worth it. <laughs> I've, I've tried to play it in BGs to see if we can get some big hits with it. And it's it's I, but I still think Bladestorm just straight up does more damage too. It's on a double of the cooldown, but still, it's just it's just too good to pass up. Meat Cleaver is definitely the kind of thing that maybe you want to play in like PVE sometimes, but I think that Terminated Kings is also the legendary that you play for PVE, which makes Bladestorm just that much better for PVE as well. So I think Bladestorm is a fairly well locked in talent choice for this row. For this row down here, I think Reckless Abandon is pretty much the way to go. Once again, it empowers 
uh, Bloodthirst and Raging Blow during Recklessness and gives you 50 Rage. So this does mean that whenever you proc Recklessness with your four piece set bonus using Raging Blow, your Bloodthirst and Raging Blow are empowered during that mini Recklessness too. So that's really, really good. <laughs> you definitely want to use that. I have tried some anger management builds in PvP and it feels okay. It feels all right, but I still think that Reckless Savannah is just a little bit too good to pass up just because it does put recklessness on a, you know, full 1.5 minute cooldown, whereas Anger Management can bring that cooldown down. But because you're proccing recklessness so often, it uh, it's really, really nice to have that. It doesn't mean that whenever you proc wreck, it gives you for the rage, but um, it does empower your abilities, which is pretty cool. Siege Breaker is an interesting option. Before the set bonus, I did play this sometimes. And you can play a Legendary that procs Siege Breaker as well. It deals a little bit of damage, and it increases the damage done to the target by 15% for 10 seconds. So Stormbolt Siege Breaker damage is not a bad combo, but I just think because of the set bonus, Reckless Abandon, it's just a little bit too good to pass up. Now for PvP talents, we've been talking about this a lot, right? This thing right here, Slaughterhouse. It's a new PvP talent. Rampage damage reduces the healing the target receives by 5% for 6 seconds, stacking up to 8 times. So what that means is Rampage hits four times every time you press it, so it, it's basically a 20% healing reduction per Rampage. And if your Rage is flowing, you can keep that up to a 40% Mortal Strike fairly often. The thing is, it only lasts for six seconds, so it does fall off fairly easily if you like, you know, get peeled from your target or you don't have enough Rage. Uh, it can definitely fall off, but when you're popping cooldowns and dealing the most damage, you're also generating the most Rage, which means that your big damage is going to be accompanied by big mortal strike, which is a very scary combo. Um, this, except for in rare situations in like 2v2, where a healing reduction effect isn't that important, maybe against like Mage Rogue, or something like that, where it's a double DPS comp that doesn't really have a lot of ways to just straight up heal itself. Maybe you don't need Slaughterhouse and you'd rather go for something else. But this is pretty much the locked in PvP talent for Fury. Battle Trance. So I was a big fan of Enduring Rage. Increases the duration of your Enrage effect by one second and your Raging Blows extend the duration of your Enrage by 1.5 seconds. I was a huge fan of this, but um, there's a, and I, I would actually use both of these, but when I have to make a choice between one or the other, I've been testing out uh, Battle Trance recently because regenerating your health and generating Rage every three seconds for 18 seconds after using Raging Blow twice in a row on a target, this persists when you don't have uptime, whereas you're not really gonna get a lot of value out of Enduring Rage unless you have really good uptime. So, if you're fighting something where you don't need Disarm, I would definitely recommend that you drop, uh, that you grab Enduring Rage instead of Disarm. But I've been experimenting with having Battle Trance as my locked in skill, just because, you know, as a warrior, you love to have 100% uptime, but it just doesn't usually happen. And as long as you don't hit anything else with Raging Blow, you are gonna be regenerating HP and rage the entire time. So when you make contact with your with your opponent, you can have a full rage bar ready to rampage and you know start getting your damage and your enrage and your mortal strike effect back up on the target, right? So I think that there's reason to have battle trance be a fairly well locked in skill, and then having this third one be something that that you kind of change depending on what you're fighting. Obviously against other warriors, you want to take disarm against really anything that is going to suffer from uh, a disarm effect, which is mostly warriors, <laughs> because a lot of other classes that you can disarm have other things they can do while disarmed. Like you, you can disarm an outlaw rogue and they'll just pistol shot you. You disarm a DK, it doesn't stop all their dots from ticking. Rep Paladins literally don't care if you disarm them because they just use Templar's verdict on you while disarmed. So they gave every single class a disarm, but warriors are the ones who suffer for it the most, I feel. Anyway, Definitely uh, play Disarm against classes that you can Disarm. I think that Enduring Rage is nice when there's just a situation where you're gonna have a lot of uptime on them and you're just gonna be pumping and you don't really need a lot of utility. I think Blood Rage is excellent against like Shamans, which will drop totems to root you behind a pillar. Sometimes they can play Frost Shock Root, it be really annoying. Rarely Master and Commander can be okay. Oftentimes Warbringer can be good, especially if you're playing Kyrian. Adding the extra second of Root uh, makes it a little bit easier to land those spears out of a charge, which is nice. So 
those are those are all good choices. I don't usually play Death Sentence a ton. I don't usually play Barbarian, even though it could be kind of fun. I love playing Death Wish and BGs, but not something that you're going to play in Arena very much. And Demolition is something that I really don't play very often. Can have some usefulness, but I don't think it's as good of an honor talent as other things, even into things that Demolition would be useful against. Now, in terms of your gear for Fury Warriors, I know I've been talking a lot about set bonuses and legendary choices. Now we can get into that a little bit. Before we do, though, I want to mention that your stats for Fury Warrior in PvP are generally going to be versatility should be your main focus, followed by haste, followed by mastery, then followed by crit. You could have a little more crit if you wanted to. I'm experimenting with even a little bit lower crit, a little bit more mastery. The reason for this is because you're proccing recklessness so much, that's giving you a 20% increased chance to crit. Whenever you use recklessness, you have a 20% increased chance to crit. So stacking a lot of crit stat probably isn't quite as worth as something like haste, which is gonna allow you to generate more rage, use more rampages, be enraged more often, mortal strike the enemy team more often. Haste is a really valuable stat. For everybody, versatility is pretty much king for PvP. You do more damage, you take less damage, you do more healing. Mastery is also just a nice way to increase the damage that you deal. Um, it's just <laughs> increases damage done while enraged, right? And if you have enough haste, and you have enough uptime, you're gonna be staying enraged, you're gonna be doing lots of damage and doing 24% more or 20 whatever percent more is very, very valuable. And then you get crit from basically just the way your class works. So you don't need to stack a lot of it, right? So when you have cooldowns up, your stat line's looking pretty juicy. You know, nearly 30% crit, you know, 30% haste, except it's like 40% haste <laughs> because you're enraged. You have the mastery pump and you have versatility pumping. Really, really nice. This last stat right here you may find interesting, which is speed. And we actually kind of have a lot of it. Uh, Fury Warriors also run faster while enraged, and if you want to run really fast, you can play Single-Minded Fury. But even with Titan's Grip, you have like 50% speed, and where that comes from are gems. So I have a 5% movement speed gem here, and I have a gem that increased speed by 13 for each Shadowlands gem you have socketed, and I have full sockets on this character on the ring, on the belt, on the helmet, on the neck, on the chest, and on the bracer so that's a lot of shadowlands gems making you run a lot faster and you'll also notice that this ring has speed on it and this ring also increases ground mount speed by 10 percent with the shadowlands which is fine uh but it's a lot of speed all together and it's this is the versatile selenium ring you can get stuff that's a little bit more haste heavy you can get with any stats just off the auction house but it makes you run pretty fast and running fast in pvp is nice Let's you keep up with your opponents, let you create some distance, let you chase them down, all good stuff. In general though, you'll see me socketing for versatility. Now there is a slight reduction in terms of effectiveness of the stat past 30%. So if you wanted to, you could sit around 30% uh, percent versatility and put stats into somewhere else like haste or crit or mastery. But I think that even with the slight DR, it's just kind of nice to even have just that much more verse, but that's up to you. Anyway. Uh, our set bonus, and if you guys don't know how the set bonus works, it's actually pretty cool. You can turn any piece of gear from Mythic Plus, or in my case, PvP, into a set item through this little thing out in Xerath Mortis. Let me see if I can quickly open my map and show it to you. It's like down here, this little thingy. Creation Catalyst, I believe is what it's called. <laughs> but yeah, you take your, your PvP set items to the Creation Catalyst, and uh, you can turn them into set gear. I've done that for my helmet, my chest, uh, not my gloves, but the legs, and what else? Where's the other one? Yeah, helmet, shoulders is what it was. There you go. So there's some shoulders. Both of these have haste verse on, which is great. Mastery, and then the crit haste is not super optimal, but it is what it is. But you'll notice that it makes Raging Blow deal 10% increased damage and gains an additional charge. So you have three charges of Raging Blow. And Raging Blow also has a 20% chance to grant recklessness for three seconds. So the two set actually got nerfed. It used to make Raging Blow deal even more damage than that. But uh, even with the nerfs, Fury is still really solid and fun to play. So highly recommended. But yep, you'll notice my itemization is pretty much PvP set. I did decide to put um, my Unity with Haste Verse on my necklace. And then I'm using the Tormented King's Ring. You could also use, if you wanted to, uh, the Death Maker which Rampage has a 30% chance to apply Siege Breaker to six, for six seconds. I think I will use uh, Deathmaker sometimes when I'm playing Night Fae, just to set up even bigger Night Fae Shockwave one-shots. But in general, 
having burst on demand is probably better than having to wait for a proc. So I do think that uh, Tormented King's Ring is better overall. And of course you buy, you know, from PvP gear as much haste and verse as you can. Where you can't buy haste and verse, I think a versatility of mastery is a good choice which is pretty much what I've done with my set. Um, in terms of trinkets, I'm playing human, so a lot of times I'll play Relentless. Sometimes I will play the Medallion. The Medallion is good as a warrior because you can trinket disarms against things that disarm you. As long as you're not trinketing a disarm against a rogue to be put in like a full kidney and killed, usually pretty good. I think that for Fury, the Insignia that grants haste baseline is good, but a lot of times these days with the game being so bursty, I'll usually be playing some sort of... Uh, you know, defensive trinket, like the Aegis trinket, if there's any magic damage that you can reduce with the Aegis, that's excellent. Or if it's all just physical damage from like, you know, like a marksmanship hunter and a rogue or something like that, maybe instead, or maybe a, like a hunter and a feral, maybe you'll just play Battlemaster instead. But that's usually the setup that I play there. When it comes to Covenant choices, you've got a lot of good choices here. Um, currently, I'm playing Kyrian. I think that it synergizes well with Fury and the fact that your Covenant Legendary gives you Elysian Might, which makes Spear of Bastion last twice as long and increases your critical strike damage by 25% when you are standing in your own spear. So with Fury, with Recklessness, you're critting a lot. And then with this particular sort of baseline legendary effect from your Covenant, you're doing a lot more damage with those crits as well. So a really fun way to lock somebody down and blast them in that spear. In terms of your actual conduit paths, uh, I usually will play Pelagos or Forge Light Prime. You can do some kind of interesting stuff with uh, Clea to take off bleeds from yourself and your teammates. Still don't usually play Clea as much. Usually I'll play Pelagos, but in terms of the uh, conduits that you should be looking out for, Depths of Insanity makes Recklessness last longer. Stalwart Guardian makes the cooldown of Enraged Regen a lot shorter. I do like to play the spear extra damage, <laughs> um, but another excellent potency conduit is the Rampage. Has a chance to refund a charge of Raging Blow. Once again, we love Raging Blow. Does damage, generates rage, has a chance to proc recklessness. Excellent skill to just spam the heck out of. So if Rampage gives you another one of those for free with about a 50-50% chance, that is excellent. In terms of defensive conduits, this is kind of the only good one for Fury. You don't really press. You don't really press. Uh, ignore pain that often. Taking, you know, damage gives you a chance to heal a little bit. Is is really only okay. You don't have deep wounds. This is a prop thing anyway. Maybe if you are really trying to go in with the uh, impending victory, you can use this. But impending victory doesn't really deal that much damage. So you pretty much just want to lock in stalwart guardian and then take uh, potency and then uh, finesse conduits. Inspiring presence is a good one. Rallying Cry's duration and health granted are increased by a lot. The other one that I really, really like um, that I'm not using is Safeguard. Intervene reduces the damage taken uh, by the target. So this is pretty much only good for allies. This is good for allies and you, so that's kind of nice. But Intervene is an excellent, like 20% damage reduction for three seconds is pretty big when enemies are bursting, right? And you gotta remember that you are taking the damage for the teammate. So when you intervene them and they take less damage, it also means that you take less damage. So very, very nice to have. Um, I'm not using it right now because I do love Disturb the Peace. So Piercing Howl's cooldown is usually 30 seconds. This brings it down to 19. Piercing Howl is such a huge AOE, you know, peel for your team. It's an AOE lockdown against enemy team. 70% slow is significant. So that's really, really nice. Um, in terms of the conduit paths and whatnot and the conduit choices, you have a lot of good ones. I think that Kyrian and Necrolord are generally the best. Whenever I play Necrolord, I usually only use the Plague Divisor. I think that in terms of the path that you take, it's kind of up to you because there's only some of them that are actually important. And usually it's like the first one and the last one anyway, and you can kind of choose what you like outside of that. But I think it's important for you to understand which are the good skills or which are the good conduits to pick up along the way, right? So like when I have fewer choices, uh, for this guy, I am using the spear damage because he buffs spear, basically, and he reduces the cooldown on spear. So spear makes sense there. You could go back for the other one, though. That would be fine. I don't use Vicious Contempt that often, but maybe it's good. Just haven't been using it. Adaptive Armor Fragment is also pretty okay, but it's not what I've been using as much. But you'll see that I can... It's like, okay, I have Deserve the Peace. I have Stalwart Guardian. I have Inspiring Presence. 
and I have Safeguard. So once you understand which conduits are the good ones to use, you kind of take the path that you like, and then just make sure that you've got the uh, particular conduits installed as well. And of course, when I play other, uh, you know, Covenants, I can walk you through those ones as well. But for now, instead of having to tell you each and every path to take for each and every Soulbind, it's mostly like, okay, which are the important ones to grab for potency, for endurance, and for finesse and make sure you grab those along a path that makes sense to you that's the main thing so you can pretty much play whatever you like and like i said when i play different uh conduit paths and different covenants because i want to i'm probably gonna try out some venthyr here pretty soon just to go crazy uh, i'll be sure to let you guys know what i'm using on those ones now i've made entire videos going over like my macros and my keybinds in the past and fortunately not a whole lot has really changed in terms of that but just for the sake of having a sort of complete video guide for you guys, we can go over a few macros that I think would be helpful and a few things that you might want to put into those macros for yourself or even teach how to write a macro in general. Um, so some of the basic things are you're going to put a, a little hashtag show tooltip, which means that when you hover over it, it'll show the tooltip of the ability that you type next, which is charge. I'll do a slash cast charge and I'll do a slash cast hamstring. Um, I have a cancel aura on here as well, which I actually want. Cancel aura blaze from on there. So that means that you'll charge, and then if you press it again when you're in melee range, it'll hamstring, right? So it's a, it's a macro in that it is one button that will do multiple things. It'll also uh, taunt things around me. So there's no arena targets around here right now. So it's not gonna do that. But yeah, if you step back into charge range, it'll charge and it'll also hamstring. Now, if I wait and I press blade storm, it'll cancel my blade storm, allowing me to charge and hamstring um, if I had charge off cooldown. Another important macro type that I need you guys to learn is focus macros. So this can be used for like target arena one, two, three, things like that. But a lot of times I'm just gonna have a lot of things on my focus. So what that's gonna look like is slash cast uh, square bracket target equals focus square bracket space storm bolt or fear or pummel Same kind of style for a lot of these things, right? You're gonna see me canceling my blade storm, which we talked about a second ago um, Using a focus macro. So like if I put this little guy on focus I'm over here beating this dude up, right? The same well, it actually cancels because I have a I have a button that sets my focus in my uh, bloodthirst anyway Say I'm beating this guy up, I want to go fear that guy, so I press focus charge, focus fear, and one button. It does two things, right? It'll charge, then it'll fear. It'll also cancel my blade storm if I want to do that. So, same thing as if I'm blade storming, I want to go over here, cancel it, and pummel that guy. Or if I want to throw a storm bolt at this guy while I'm targeting this guy, right? That's kind of ends up how those focus macros work. A lot of times you're going to see me canceling my blade storm to use an ability on my focus target rather than the target that I'm actually attacking. So that's the basics on the macros and how to write macros that I want you guys to understand is understanding like the slash cast thing, right? Understanding the cancel aura blade storm and understanding the focus sort of syntax. Those are pretty important. And because I mentioned it, here's also just the slash cast battle shout uh, slash use whatever mount you want to use um, to do a battle shout mount up combo. Never forget how to, or never forget to use battle shout again, right? <laughs> In terms of gameplay, I have posted tons of Fury BGs, Fury Arenas. We even will have lots of Bajira's Arena Academy videos for you guys to check out, which is like a uh, walkthrough of arena matches, giving an idea of what I'm doing, what my intentions are. But for the purpose of this guide, we still can walk you through sort of the basic rotation, even though in those videos, you're going to be able to see the abilities that I'm using right here above my details, okay? So you can keep an eye out for that in the future. But a lot of times what you're gonna be doing is Fury is charging in, getting a hamstring up. I think that it's still probably good to put a Bloodthirst up to see if you can get that Enrage before you start spamming Raging Blow. Because if you can get your Enrage up, it's pretty nice, but if you don't, you can just spam Raging Blow until you can uh, Rampage. You'll notice I'm, I'm procking Recklessness off of those Raging Blows. Once you get full Rage, drop the Rampage. If you ever get, um, those sudden death procs to execute, go for it. If you have already pressed Bloodthirst and Raging Blow, you don't have any other buttons to press, that's a fine time to just Whirlwind for uh, Rage Management, Rage Generation, or another great chance to go ahead and just refresh your hamstring on a target. Another good thing to do. 
Let's see, does this one show hamstring? It does, okay. So charge, raging blow, we do have enough rage to rampage. In terms of which button to press, whether it's raging blow or bloodthirst, if you have raging blow available, I just go ahead and press that once again, just because it does give you a chance to proc recklessness. Get another hamstring up, and you're gonna notice your rotation is not real complicated, right? You're basically using bloodthirst and raging blow to generate rage. Hamstring does cost rage, but it's good to keep your slow up on a target. If the hamstring is up, you don't have enough rage to rampage, and none of your abilities are, are on cooldown or, uh, or off cooldown, you can just press one whirlwind to just generate some rage, do a little bit of damage, but it also has the benefit of giving you a chance to cleave your attacks, right? So you can press execute and hit both of those guys, right? Press hamstring and hit both of those guys. Pretty neat. But yeah, building rage with bloodthirst, raging blow, spending rage with rampage, slowing with hamstring, using your execute procs and they're available. Pretty much the name of the game. In terms of bursting as a Fury Warrior, same kind of thing, right? Charge in, get a hamstring up, if you have enough rage, rampage, then let it rip with recklessness, which will put you into this super stage. Now, a lot of times, whenever you, if you press uh, recklessness with this legendary on, it's gonna actually make you blade storm for a little while first, which is not the worst thing, but sometimes if you can use blade storm just to kind of like get that full rage bar and then cancel blade storm and start using rampage into raging blow, it's gonna be more single target damage. You can also combo that with your spear to do big damage, right? And generate some rage. And in terms of your full burst, <laughs> you can even drop a whirlwind after your your first like rampage. And if you're all out of uh, raging blow juice, just hit a blade storm to get your rage back up, and then keep going back to work with your um, raging blow spam into rampage when you have it, bloodthirst when you don't. But you'll notice that bloodthirst is a pretty dang short cooldown when you have that uh, empowerment up. So. If you're uh, in a in rough spot, you know, whenever you have Recklessness up, if you get a little proc, or if you actually press Recklessness, you'll be able to heal a ton uh, in a short period of time thanks to uh, Enraged Regen, right? So right here, you can just press it once, if, and then you get another one right after. So that's two massive heals, which uh, can definitely help you stay alive in a sketchy situation. But yeah, Fury's rotation is not real complicated. It's great for beginners. It's still really effective as a class. It's a lot of fun to play in PvP and PvE. So I definitely recommend you give it a try. I think just this just about covers everything I wanted to talk about uh, with Fury. We talked about its basic abilities. We talked about its talents. We talked about the stats, the gear, conduit paths, a few macros that'll be useful for you, basic rotation. Now it's time for you guys to get out there and try it yourself. And of course, continue to check out the videos for tons more warrior pvp a lot of it being fury that it can help you learn what i do and hopefully instruct some of what you guys do in your gameplay as well so if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful make sure you guys give it a big thumbs up absolutely leave me any questions or comments in the comment section down below subscribe to see plenty more wow warrior pvp videos from me as well as be sure to follow along on twitch we're live pretty much every day streaming some kind of gaming some kind of gaining would be a lot of fun to hang out with you guys there as well. But one last thing, thanks for watching. Appreciate the love. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.